Alex Rodriguez is undoubtedly one of the best baseball players to ever play the game, as well as one of the most popular and familiar. From 1994 to his retirement in 2016, he dominated Major League Baseball with his hitting prowess and fielding skill. Nostalgia has established itself as a powerful force in the video game industry. Even hyper-contemporary games such as Fortnite, which features a constant stream of updates targeting a younger audience, often leans into the nostalgia factor by featuring characters inspired by franchises that originated decades ago. However, no gaming era receives quite as much nostalgic reverence as the one that spanned the 80s and 90s. A three-time American League Most Valuable Player and 14-time All-Star, Arad, was an all-time great for the Seattle Mariners, Texas Rangers, and, especially, the New York Yankees. But Rodriguez's name and fame transcend sports. Even people who don't follow or even actively dislike America's greatest pastime know exactly who he is. That's probably because he's been one half of a number of high-profile romances that have graced gossip blogs, tabloids, and even the high society page. The period dominated by the original Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and Game Boy was the birthplace of some of the industry's most iconic mascots and was the origin point for gameplay mechanics still used today. We bring you the romantic saga of Alex Rodriguez with all of his major pairings, marriages, dalliances, and entanglements accounted for, from when he first became known for celebrity reasons, not just his athletic skills, and all the way up to the present day. Alex Rodriguez was a family man with Cynthia Skirtis in 1998. Alex Rodriguez was 23 years old, and he'd been a star for the Seattle Mariners for about four years. Games that might be decades old an eternity in the fast-moving world of technology, are still played on retro devices such as the SNES Classic Edition and reimagined game and watch controllers. While the new devices that introduce these games in all their 16-bit glory to new audiences are great, nothing beats the real thing. While working out at the Body and Soul Gym in Coconut Grove, Florida, per the New York Post, he met Cynthia Skirtis, a holder of a master's degree in psychology who at the time was a pretrial counselor who worked to prevent criminal recidivism. The pursuit of authentic video games has established a secondary market for vintage, high-quality original prints of some of the most popular games out there. Here are some of the most valuable video games out there, the kind that are so expensive, they might even be worth more than your car. Super Mario 64 became the most valuable N64 game at $38,000 for the most part. The highest value video games found at auction are dominated by the earliest Nintendo offerings. While the Nintendo 64 is undoubtedly an older piece of hardware, it does mark a point where Nintendo and the video game industry started to move into its next era of higher fidelity visual styles and 3D worlds. That said, Dedicated collectors may have an educated guess as to which mustachioed plumber's face appears on the world's most valuable Nintendo 64 game. At first, the two were very close friends, before things rapidly turned romantic. I scouted her out for a month, Rodriguez later admitted, via ESPN, before, build, ing, enough courage, to join Skirtis in her routine abs workout. For her part, Skirtis initially thought his baseball career was more of a nice hobby than his actual job recalling, I didn't grow up in a sports-oriented family. It is, of course, Mario once again. Like its predecessors Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario World, the first Mario title developed and released for the Nintendo 64 set a high watermark for almost everything that came out on the console afterward. It became a best-selling title, won numerous awards, and influenced an entire generation of platformers that came after it. As such, when a well-preserved copy of the game was made available on heritage auctions, more than two dozen bidders competed to add the game to their library. The winner of the auction ended up paying $38,400 for the game, the most ever paid for a Nintendo 64 title. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker danced its way to $38,000 while Nintendo may have been a dominant force in the 80s and 90s, it was by no means the only console that had gamers' attention. Nintendo's biggest competitor was the aggressively advertised Sega Genesis, which featured the iconic Sonic the Hedgehog alongside well-known versions of NBA Jam, the uncensored Mortal Kombat arcade port, and Street Fighter II, Champion Edition. With such a solid library of games, it might come as a surprise to collectors to find out that the title that has generated the most interest is an odd movie tie-in, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. By any measures, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker is a weird game. 
The player controls Michael Jackson on a quest to find kidnapped children hidden in closets while defeating Mr. Big and his minions with a mixture of dance moves and magic dust, all set to chiptune versions of Jackson's hits. Despite Michael Jackson's Moonwalker's oddities, or perhaps because of them, a pristine copy of the game sparked a bidding war perhaps not only with video game collectors but Michael Jackson fans as well. When all was said and done, a highly rated, sealed copy of the game sold for $38,400 in early 2021. Metroid put a $46,000 bounty on a copy of the original game as another foundational franchise in Nintendo's corner. Metroid and its heroine Samus Aran have enjoyed a long legacy of video game excellence and the ultimate honor, a permanent slot in Super Smash Bros. So, I wasn't aware that you could have an entire livelihood off of a sport. Their relationship was a long-distance love affair for years, on account of how Rodriguez traveled for work. Beyond that, the original took the side-scrolling action of Super Mario Bros. and combined it with the open-ended world of The Legend of Zelda to provide an entirely new experience. Later iterations of the franchise, such as Super Metroid and Metroid Prime, helped keep the game relevant and revolutionary for new audiences and systems. But on Skirtus' 30th birthday, the ballplayer proposed, and they were married in November 2002. Their first child, daughter Natasha, was born two years later, and daughter Ella followed in 2008. However, two months after the birth of baby number two, according to People, Cynthia Rodriguez filed for divorce. While the franchise hasn't seen any significant releases in the past few years, the series still holds a special place in many gamers' hearts and video game collections. That's why when a copy surfaced in 2020 that received the highest quality rating given out by WADA, gamers were eager to add it to their libraries. The inciting incident? Alex Rodriguez allegedly carried on what his estranged wife referred to as an affair of the heart with another woman. More on this below. This former baseball star might have dated Madonna it was never confirmed and has been frequently denied, but baseball's brightest may have had a fling with one of music's most enduring legends. The game's price was pushed into the tens of thousands and ultimately sold for $46,800. Chrono Trigger traveled through time to sell for $48,000 Nintendo demonstrated with games like The Legend of Zelda that consoles had what it takes to put together a compelling RPG experience but Square took things to the next level in the 90s. Square's signature franchise, Final Fantasy, pushed JRPGs to the forefront of the video game world, and the company produced many other titles that would have a lasting legacy in the industry. During this period, one of Square's best-remembered games was Chrono Trigger, a time-traveling adventure that premiered on the Super Nintendo and PlayStation. While Chrono Trigger never established the same legacy that Final Fantasy or The Legend of Zelda did, the game is fondly remembered for its novel gameplay mechanics and memorable storytelling. When Heritage Auctions made a well-preserved copy of this excellent game available in 2020, collectors didn't hesitate to put in bids. When all was said and done, the game sold to one dedicated buyer for $48,000, a full 25 years after its original release. The Legend of Zelda sold for a legendary $50,000 while franchises featuring Mario or Pokemon might be better known to mainstream audiences. Loyal Nintendo fans are intimately familiar with the long-running Legend of Zelda series and its progenitor, The Legend of Zelda. The original Legend of Zelda game was revolutionary in many ways. The game proved that consoles could provide the same full-featured RPG experience that had once been restricted mainly to PCs. An internal save feature meant that gamers could experience an epic story that didn't need to finish in a single sitting. Beyond that, The Legend of Zelda established characters like Link, Zelda, and Ganon in the world of Hyrule that would serve as the setting for a franchise that still produces some of the best-loved games today. As a result, high-quality copies of the original can demand top prices from collectors. In 2008, per the New York Daily News, Alex Rodriguez was spotted at a Madonna concert and Madge herself was seen attending a New York Yankees game when Rodriguez was in the lineup. He also reportedly made some late-at-night appearances in the vicinity of Madonna's New York home, including just after Rodriguez's wife, Cynthia, gave birth to their second child together. This purported dalliance, according to People, is what supposedly led Cynthia Rodriguez, nay Skirtis, to dump her husband. A wife with two young children can only take so much, a family member claimed. After that news broke, Madonna told people that no affair had occurred. 
I know Alex Rodriguez through Guy O'Siri, who manages both of us. In 2020, the game sold for a new high with an auction that closed at $33,600, only to be beat a couple of months later by a sealed copy that ultimately sold for $50,400. A $50,000 copy of Super Mario World is the most valuable SNES title while games for the original NES dominate the top echelon of valuable vintage games. Collectors still have plenty of interest in titles from its successor, the Super Nintendo. I am not romantically involved in any way with Alex Rodriguez. I have nothing to do with the state of his marriage. The next day, per people, Cynthia filed for divorce. The dominance of Nintendo's signature star, Mario, continues on the SNES with Super Mario World. Dedicated collectors probably won't be surprised that Mario's face is on the most valuable Super Nintendo title. Her attorney, Earl Lilly, suggested that one cause was that Arad allegedly emotionally stepped out on his wife. The correct analysis is a relationship, Lilly said. Still, there is one interesting detail that helps propel this particular Mario game to the top of the list. Some people categorize an affair as something as sexual infidelity. Super Mario World was a launch title for the Super Nintendo, which means that early run, sealed copies of the game are scarce. The fact that the pristine copies of such a renowned game are so tricky to track down has helped raise the value of complete, in-box versions that do surface. Early in 2020, a bidding war between 28 collectors helped propel the value of one highly rated, sealed version of the game to $50,400. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! Knocked out $50,000 at auction Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! was a relatively short-lived series that left a long legacy for the NES. We're not claiming that. The Punch Out! franchise began life as an arcade cabinet in 1983 created by Nintendo, followed by a sequel, Super Punch Out! The cabinets did well, and when Nintendo geared up to launch the NES, they also prepared to port Punch Out! However, there were two significant differences between the arcade version and the NES port of Punch Out! First off, the NES had lower hardware capabilities than the arcade cabinets did meaning Nintendo needed to minimize specific graphic effects for the home version, which resulted in the creation of the famed Little Mac player character. It's an affair of the heart. Madonna, however, wasn't explicitly named in the filing. Alex Rodriguez became momentarily enchanted with Melissa Britos amid persistent rumors that he was still dating Madonna. Alex Rodriguez spent Valentine's Day 2009, according to NBC Washington, with a different woman. Melissa Britos, a model whose specialty is bridal wear and fancy white gowns for wedding websites and publications like Bridal Fashion. The two reportedly lived it up in Miami Beach, eating dinner at a fancy report while being photographed close up by paparazzi. The site of the date, a restaurant at the high-end and beachside Fontainebleau Resort, was reportedly a sentimental choice, as that's where Rodriguez and Britos had met about three months earlier not so long after the end of his marriage to Cynthia Rodriguez, his wife of five years. As reported by The Hollywood Gossip, the pair came in contact at the opening of the resort, and Arad supposedly became obsessed with Britos, according to a friend of the models, who added, he sent her at least a dozen text messages, asking her to spend time with him. The alleged couple weren't spotted much after that Valentine's Day, and both Rodriguez and Britos eventually moved on to other romantic partners. Arad took Bethany Frankel out on a couple of dates when the Real Housewives of New York City star Bethany Frankel guested on an episode of Watch What Happens Live in 2017. Host Andy Cohen relayed a question from a viewer, who wanted to know if it would be uncomfortable for her to serve as a guest judge on Shark Tank with retired baseball great Alex Rodriguez, on account of how they used to date. Second, Nintendo arranged an endorsement from Mike Tyson, an up-and-coming heavyweight boxer. Tyson signed a three-year contract with Nintendo, during which time he won the 1986 WBC heavyweight title. After those three years were up, Nintendo continued selling Punch Out! Without Mike Tyson's name, the shrieks of surprise from the live audience indicated that the fact these two famous people dated was not well-known public information. However, Frankel quickly diffused the situation, admitting that she and Rodriguez weren't exactly going steady. I was out with him twice. As a result, copies bearing Tyson's endorsement are highly sought after in the video game collector's community. I went out with him on two dates, she said of their brief time together, which, according to People, happened around 2009. When a highly graded copy of the game went up for auction, 
intense competition drove the game up to $50,400. The Nintendo World Championship raced to a $52,000 price tag Almost all high-value collectible video games have certain things in common. Often, they come as a complete set, including the original box and manual. The price goes even higher if that box has a printing irregularity and remains sealed. In answering Cohen's question on whether or not a rod is a good kisser, Frankel replied, I don't honestly remember. That probably means, no, or at the very least, that the dates never got that physical. Alex Rodriguez and Kate Hudson had a brief but heavily publicized romance The opening party for the Fontainebleau Resort in Miami in November 2008 was very much romantically productive for Alex Rodriguez. Not only did he meet model and alleged short-lived flame Melissa Britos that evening, he also met and hit it off with movie star Kate Hudson, and all while he was reportedly still quietly linked to Madonna. According to the New York Daily News, Madonna sent her friend, Ingrid Casares, to platonically escort Rodriguez to the shindig. They wound up hanging out with Hudson, who reportedly heavily flirted with the baseball star. One high-value collectible breaks with that tradition entirely, however, the Nintendo World Championship cartridge. In 1990, Nintendo held a heavily promoted tournament that traveled around North America to crown a few skilled competitors the Nintendo World Champions. To ensure a level playing field, Nintendo produced custom cartridges for the tournament featuring challenges from Super Marion Bros., Rad Racer, and Tetris. The cartridges were unassuming by Nintendo's standards, featuring just a simple logo and serial number. However, their uniqueness has made them some of the most valuable loose cartridges in existence. Hudson had her arms completely wrapped around a rod's weight and every time he leaned over to talk to anyone she would pull him back toward her, a witness claimed. Months later, when the 2009 baseball season started, Hudson started showing up to watch Rodriguez play in games in both Los Angeles and New York, according to InStyle. When one of the cartridges showed up at a vintage store in Seattle, the owner purchased it on the spot for $13,000, assured that it would sell for at least $15,000. Auctions have driven up that price even higher, with one copy selling for $52,800. Later that year, Hudson downplayed the seriousness of the relationship to Harper's Bazaar, saying, I have a child, and there are people involved, and it's unfair to talk about somebody else, especially when you're not in that place yet to be discussing those things. Indeed, by the end of 2009, Rodriguez and Hudson were through. Rumor has it, however, that the gold cartridges produced as Nintendo Power Giveaway could be worth over $100,000. Stadium events. Family Fun Fitness hurtled its way to $66,000 Many of the vintage games that have brought in large sums of cash over the years have earned their value as well-preserved copies of one of the most popular games in history. Super Mario Bros., Donkey Kong, and Pokemon are all household words, after all, and rare copies of those titles have innate desirability. Breaking with that mold is stadium events. Family Fun Fitness, a game that almost no one has heard of and even fewer people ever owned. A source cited by Us Weekly claimed that Rodriguez resented Hudson for allegedly trying to get herself photographed when attending his games. Alex wanted someone who was more interested in building a long-term relationship than just building their profile. The MLB alum spent a couple of Super Bowls with Cameron Diaz Alex Rodriguez and Cameron Diaz were first romantically linked in February 2010. Stadium events is rare because the developers only shipped a few hundred copies before Nintendo recalled the game to rebrand it as World Class Track Meet. No one knows what happened to those copies of stadium events after they went back to the warehouse, but one thing is for sure, they are hard to find. As a result, stadium events has been a highly desirable collector's item for over a decade. According to Life & Style, via Digital Spy, they met at a Super Bowl party held by the Creative Artists Agency. In 2010, the game made headlines when a copy of the box with the manual sold for $13,000. In 2017, another copy sold for $41,000. This was right around the time that OK! Magazine, via Digital Spy, reported that they were seen dirty dancing at a star-studded Miami event. The game remains incredibly valuable today. A recent sale on eBay brought in $55,000 while an auction ended up reaching $66,000. Donkey Kong jumped to a respectable $72,000 all in all. Donkey Kong had a rough run in the beginning. Cast as the villain in his first arcade game, 1981's Donkey Kong. Nintendo's most famous gorilla ended up waiting in the wings while the unnamed hero of his own game became Jumpman, then Mario, and then the face of the entire Nintendo brand.
It wasn't until Rare took over the franchise and developed Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo that DK got the starring role he deserved. That said, the original Donkey Kong is an indisputably important part of video game history. More than a year later, in May 2011, Diaz finally confirmed the relationship to L. Alex is my boyfriend. It's not a secret anymore, she said. That just proved what the world already knew, as earlier in 2011, Fox's TV cameras caught Diaz in a luxury box at the Super Bowl popping popcorn kernels into Rodriguez's mouth. According to InStyle, the romance didn't last longer after Diaz admitted that it was happening. While the game may have been made famous by the arcade cabinets that appeared around the United States in the late 80s, the NES console port released in 1985 is also a highly desired collector item. The appearance of a highly graded, sealed copy of Donkey Kong with a unique packaging variant once again inspired a bidding war through heritage auctions. After some sources reported that they broke up in June 2011, they ended things for real three months later. Of the reportedly amicable and mutual split, a source cited by People said, they're still close friends and will continue to be close friends. The game's final price reached $72,000, which was more than triple its estimated value. A copy of the original Mega Man raked in $75,000 Nintendo products dominate the list of the world's highest video game sales, which makes sense considering that the company was the biggest name in town during the late 80s and 90s. They have considerable respect for each other. A Rod and Tori Wilson were together for three years Alex Rodriguez had a lot in common with Tori Wilson. As a professional female wrestler, officially designated a WWE diva, as part of the grappling promotions women's division, Wilson was a popular, photogenic athlete operating the top of her physical abilities, just like Rodriguez. People reported that Rodriguez and Wilson were spotted all over North America together over the 2011-2012 winter holiday season, including in Mexico, Miami, and Boise, Idaho, which is Wilson's hometown. However, part of Nintendo's success was its willingness to push its proprietary products and open up its consoles for outside developers to support an expansive library of titles. One of the first big franchises that Capcom developed for the NES was Mega Man, released in 1987. The couple were also seen working out in the same gym. They unofficially went public in early January 2012, when cameras caught them kissing each other hard at a Los Angeles Lakers game. According to E. The pair were solid and steady for a long time, right up until the very end of 2014, when they broke up after three years together. The game had been a sleeper hit in Japan, prompting Capcom executives to rush a localization effort to get the game ready for US markets. This resulted in the awkward box art the first game is famous for, which GameSpot called, the ugliest box art of all time. However, in the world of vintage game collecting, sometimes bad can be good. When a copy of what collectors claimed to be the last sealed copy of the game's original run in the U.S. became available, around 20 bidders drove the price up to unheard of levels. They're still friends and they still support each other, a source close to the couple said. Alex Rodriguez and Ann Wojcicki were a couple for about a year Alex Rodriguez doesn't only have eyes for movie stars, famous singers, and other members of the entertainment class, for the better part of a year. He dated a scientist and entrepreneur whose work captivated the nation. According to the New York Times, Ann Wojcicki is a medical researcher and a co-founder of 23andMe, the company that offers home DNA test kits that can lead to consumers discovering health issues and uncovering their family ancestry. When this rare copy of Mega Man sold for $75,000 in 2019, it set the world record for the most money ever spent on a single game. Pokemon Red cut $84,000 at auction while original NES games are dominant in the world of high-priced collectible video games, there is plenty of room for competition from other platforms. In 2021, 23andMe went public with an IPO of $3.5 billion, per Forbes, which is 10 times Alex Rodriguez's substantial $350 million portfolio, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Set up by mutual friends in 2015, per the New York Times, Wojcicki took an interest in Rodriguez, whom she didn't know was a world-class baseball player. The Nintendo Game Boy and its successor, the Nintendo Game Boy Color, had a unique impact on video game history, and one of the signature franchises for those consoles, Pokemon, commands high prices. Of particular interest to collectors are the first two editions of the game Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue.
Each version of the game was functionally identical except for the different types of Pokémon that players could find in each game. This marketing move, alongside the card game and TV series success, helped make Pokémon the cultural phenomenon that it still is today. While high-quality versions of both versions of the game attract interest from collectors, the Red Edition holds the record for the most money spent on a copy of Pokémon. However, Wojcicki's mother, Esther, didn't think the relationship was one for the ages. When one highly rated, sealed copy of the game went up for auction, a fan was willing to pay $84,000 to add it to his collection. The original Super Mario Brothers. I liked Arad, he was a very nice man, she said. Cleared $114,000 almost since the day Mario squared off against Donkey Kong in 1981. The vaguely Italian plumber has been the face of Nintendo and an emblem of video gaming as a whole. The character's immense popularity has helped fuel a secondary market that has driven prices of high-quality copies of his signature games to extraordinary levels. Until the PlayStation came along, the original Nintendo Entertainment System was the best-selling console of all time, and Mario's first game on the system, Super Mario Bros., was its best-selling game. The simple story of a plumber searching for the often abducted Princess Peachy became iconic when released in 1985, and copies are almost as easy to find today as they were in the 80s. Finding a sealed copy of the game, however, is another story. Quote dot dot dot. Right away I figured out this was a mismatch. He had no academic background. A copy of the game sealed with a sticker, instead of shrink wrap, indicating it was produced in one of the game's first printings, is legendary. One such sticker sealed copy of Super Mario Bros. We couldn't have an intellectual conversation about anything. According to Page Six, Arad and Wojcicki reportedly struggled to find much in common and broke up after less than a year of dating. The former baseball star almost married Jennifer Lopez according to Sports Illustrated. Alex Rodriguez met Jennifer Lopez, international movie star, pop singer, perfume tycoon, and former in living color, fly girl, at work. In a stadium tunnel at a baseball game, they felt an immediate connection. We shook hands, and it was this weird electricity, Lopez said. Made its way to heritage auctions and set what was at the time a world record when it sold for $114,000. Super Mario Bros. 3 set a record high at $156,000 when it comes to determining the value of a classic video game, there are a wide variety of factors in play. Sometimes a high resale value is the result of extreme rarity. Both were presently married, but when they met again by chance at an event in Beverly Hills in 2017, they were single and free to pursue that electricity. Other times a supply quirk, like a recall or a licensing snafu, can drive the price up. A unique feature like an autograph can also cause prices to soar. Every once in a while, though, as in the case of the most expensive Nintendo game ever sold, all it takes is a pristine copy of one of the best-selling video games of its era. Things escalated quickly, and during a March 2019 vacation to the Bahamas, Rodriguez and Lopez got engaged and announced the happy news via dual Instagram posts. According to Us Weekly, the two hadn't set a date by early 2020 and pushed it back because of Lopez's busy schedule. Meanwhile, a summer 2020 wedding date came and went, delayed due to coronavirus-related shutdowns. In March 2021, according to Page Six, Rodriguez and Lopez reportedly called off the wedding altogether and had broken up, although, later in the week, the two released a statement, via E, calling the Splitsville rumors, inaccurate, and announcing that they were still together and were simply, working through some things. Days after Arad denied being single in a paparazzi video obtained by TMZ, he flew from Miami to the Dominican Republic to visit J. Lo, where she was working on the set of Shotgun Wedding. According to a source cited by People, they are really trying to figure things out. Super Mario Brothers. It was a happy reunion. Is there a new lady on the block for Alex Rodriguez? Was there a third party involved with the relationship tumult of Alex Rodriguez and Jennifer Lopez? According to Page Six, Shep Rose of Bravo's Southern Charm called in to his network boss's Sirius XM show, Andy Cohen Live, in March 2021, and confessed to how he initially heard that his co-star, Madison Lecroy, supposedly had something going on with Rodriguez. 3 is a rare game by no means, having moved 17. 28 million copies for the NES, and there are so many copies out there that the playable copy by itself is only worth about $10.
However, when news that a sealed, mint condition copy with a slight publishing variation was circulating, collectors began to pay attention. This particular copy of Super Mario Bros. 3 was shipped with the last word of the title covering part of Mario's white glove. While filming at Capers Island in South Carolina, Rose claimed that Lecroy said on camera, well, I'm DMing with a rod, but we can't talk about that. Or, they can't air this, because I signed an NDA. That footage wasn't used on Southern Charm, but cast member Craig Conover had discussed Lecroy's alleged relationship with the still-attached Rodriguez on a reunion special, with the name of the man in question bleeped out by producers. For her part, Lecroy previously told Page Six that the edited name was, Alex Rodriguez, but added that they'd never been physical, and had only spoken on the phone. That oddity, alongside the mint condition packaging, sparked a bidding war among 20 collectors that led to a final sale price of $156,000. The original Super Mario Brothers. He's never physically cheated on his fiancée with me, Lecroy explained. Meanwhile, a source close to Rodriguez told a different tale. He doesn't know this woman, the insider claimed to the New York Post. Look, does this mean he didn't DM her and liked a photo or two? I guess not, but he doesn't know her. Either way, if you ask another source cited by People, the Rodriguez Lecroy reports had no bearing on the rough patch with Lopez at all. Reportedly set a world record with a $660,000 sale, Mario was a standout character in Nintendo's roster from the first time he faced off against Donkey Kong, and in the decades that followed, he became an emblem for gaming as a whole. Nintendo's famous Italian plumber has enjoyed widespread popularity which has helped power a robust secondary market in which high-quality copies of Super Mario Bros. are some of the most sought-after items in video game collecting. The Nintendo Entertainment System was a revitalizing console following the game market crash in 1983 and, according to VG Charts, Super Mario Bros. was its best-selling title. As a result, copies are almost as easy to find today as they were then. However, hunting down a sealed copy of an early production run of Super Mario Bros. in perfect condition is something else entirely. When a pristine copy of the fourth version of Super Mario Bros. ever produced, identifiable by its perforated cardboard hangtab and missing, Game Poc NESGP code, emerged on Heritage Auctions it sparked a bidding war that ended in a sale for $660,000. According to a press release, the game had sat undisturbed in the owner's desk for 35 years before being brought to auction where it allegedly became the most valuable video game ever sold by a wide margin. Castlevania cracked the whip to go for $38,400 along with Metroid. Castlevania is credited with helping invent a new genre of platformer, the Metroidvania, in which exploration and the improvements of skills or items are just as important as reflexes. The original Castlevania took the kid-friendly palette of many NES games and applied dark tones, crafting an adult feeling experience matched with a high-caliber challenge that still receives praise from outlets like IGN. While the series grew in complexity with later titles to help define the Metroidvania genre, the original established a solid foundation that remains enjoyable still, if gamers can get their hands on a playable copy. Thankfully, Castlevania was a popular game, and working copies are still floating around. However, well-preserved, Sealed copies of the title from early production runs exist in the single digits according to a heritage auction listing. A copy on the site was identifiable as one of the first ever made thanks to its distinct cardboard hangtab packaging design. When this collector's item finally sold, the buyer paid $38,400 to own a piece of video game history.